You know, my dear friends, in a country which has produced such great men of God and great expositors of the Word of God, you know, what's new? You know, if you want to ask that question, a word from the Lord, that is what comes to us as a fresh revelation. So I have been praying and pondering before the Lord, what is the message for folks? And uh, the Lord directed me to the words constancy and consistency. You know, to achieve anything, it has to be constant. How do you like to have a beautiful wall clock that just ticks for a while and then takes a little rest and then it ticks again? Would you want to have a beautiful wall clock like that? Or the underground, which some of you possibly used. Suppose you know that that particular train is going to halt between stations and power cut off. Would you want to be seated in that darkness? Certainly not. We need constancy. How would you like to marry a man who says, okay, for six months, you can be my wife. <laughs> for six months, you can have literally all that I have, but for six months. Then I need a break, you know. And after a couple of years, I will consider once again. What would you want? Would you, would you want to be in such a relationship? Now, if you turn to the Word of God at First Chronicles chapter 28, and here we see David assembled all the princes of Israel. And now He was going to give a solemn charge to his son. Let's look at 6, verse 6. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my court. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. If he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments, as at this day. I will be with him. I will establish his kingdom. 
if he will be constant. You know, my dear friends, to build a temple like the fabulous structure that Solomon built takes a lot of consistent, constant application. And in the kingdom of God, we feel we can stop and start, stop and start. Off and on, we carry on that way. Just imagine what your life would have been had you been constant and consistent in your walk with God. You know, folks, here we see God saying in the ninth verse, and uh, David conveys these words to his son. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of your father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. You know, my dear friends, our minds do play truant. They play tricks of all kinds. Why not this? Why only the statutes of God? You know, I have a great faith in the Word of God. I can't do it. But the word of God cannot be annulled. The power of God's word. Nations can't change it. Parliaments might pass laws contrary to the word of God. But that will only spell death to the nation. And we ought to tremble when we see any law coming out of Westminster or from the UNO or from the EU, which notoriously has no place for God in its constitution. And I know that EU will not work. Here are a basket of various nations with varying degrees of allegiance to truth. And you cannot run it. You simply can't. Bankers can't. Parliaments can't. Why? There is no truth there. There is no God there. You see, take Jesus Christ out of Europe. Once again, Europe will return perhaps not to the spears and shields, but to the ancient savagery. There is nothing like post-gravity. All right, suppose I say, this room has gotten into the realm of post-gravity. So gravity won't work. 
So your chair with you on top of it will keep floating on our heads. Huh. And your clothing may fly away. There's no gravity. And you think if anybody can take Jesus out of the scene? No one. Just no one. No country, no nation can do that. My son, know the God of your father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. How we need a willing mind. A mind which is not unstable. You know, there's a lot of incoherence. Just, you can't explain it. It's incoherent. Our mind plays a lot of tricks. Oh, this will not work. Who, would, who are you to say that? What does God say? Out of nothing. When God said, let there be light, there was light. When God created human lives, he said, male and female did he make them. No system can work. When you say, I will have partners of my own choice. It simply cannot work. God made them male and female. You know, my dear friends, I don't know what would have happened to my family had just the family existed on a father. All right. I had a sense of responsibility as a father, but boy, can anybody take the room of a mother The finest man on the face of the globe cannot take the room of the mother. That's it. God made them male and female. God's word is going to stand after all the vanities and experiments that people have tried to make fall to nothing. My dear friends, so we need willing hearts. To do God's will and obey his word. Now let us turn to Titus, third chapter. Now I don't know how many of you would be surprised if I had said Titus, 12th chapter. <laughs> well, I do hope you're... <laughs> Thank you. Yes. There are some of you at least you will say, my Bible does not have 12 chapters for Titus. Third chapter. 
and the eighth verse. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that you affirm constantly. You see, fear has no place when you declare the truth. I can't change truth. It's not according to my whim and fancy. Oh, gravity does not exist anymore. I don't think so. That's my opinion. What do you mean? It's not going to work that way. Just because you happen to have an insane thought? No. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that you affirm constantly that they who believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. You see, the faithful word of God, if you cannot take it to any part of the globe, you can only expect confusion there. Confusion, bloodshed, and worse. You can't expect cosmos. You can't expect a utopia. Everything will be fine. We are in control. No, not without God's word. So, have we filled Britain with the word of God? All right, all of us can say, I'm doing a little, you know, brother. Who was that who sat in her corner eating her Christmas pie? Little Jack Horner sat in her corner. Well, my dear friends, you can say, well, I'm sitting in my corner and doing all I can, but this is a time of instant communication. It is amazing. They say on one of these little handheld contraptions, you can get almost anything, everything, or at least anything, which hitherto were not accessible to people. All right, at such a time, must it be only a small group of people whom, to whom we communicate the danger ahead? Is that right? Is that something which you and I can love? No, my friends, certainly not. There are certain things which need to be affirmed constantly. You know, when sometimes mothers try to teach something which is not too appetizing to the child, you see a mother tell the child again and again and again, the same thing. 
The same thing. Mother, you have told me this 20 times. Why do you want to tell me this anymore? Because 20 times didn't do you any good. Obviously. So there are, there are the truths of God which must be affirmed constantly. It should be in our walk, it should be in our talk, it should be something which we stand by all the time. Let us pray. Holy Father, we are surrounded by our walls, stumbling blocks of all sorts, impregnable fortresses, and we are filled with a spirit of fear. Take away that spirit of fear, Lord. Give us the spirit which is, was in Caleb when he said, we are well able to take the land. O oh Lord, forgive us that your word has been limited to so few strangers that have come to Britain could not take your word to every corner of the globe. Britannia that ruled the waves and half the globe. What an opportunity was given to take the word of God. Some of your faithful children took it into the heart of Africa, into those desolate places of Asia, Oh, my Father, forgive us that this small channel that separates Europe from England should have separated the history of France so much from the history of Britain. Please, Lord, let thy word reach the nations. Hear our humble prayer in Jesus.